And my name is Rich Warneth from Computer Aided Technology. Been doing this for quite a while, about 25 years now, and uh, we've got uh, nationwide uh, lo locations, uh, you know, serving clients across North America for support, sales, training, everything. And if, if you look at the solutions we provide, um, our, our primary partners are SolidWorks, Dassault, Stratasys, Creaform, and Desktop Metal. And we've spent a lot of time <coughs> investing in areas like product data management, product lifecycle management, PDM, PLM, and uh, you'll, you'll find a, a good chunk of our team is focused just on that piece of, of uh, the business. There's not one industry that we focus on. We'll, we'll support everyone from aerospace and defense to automotive, transportation, consumer goods, medical products, industrial equipment, and companies large and small. We've done quite a bit, and, and really it's just surrounding everything related to product development solutions. Like I said earlier, we've been doing this for about 25 years. We uh, were fortunate to be the first partner for SolidWorks in North America. So uh, that's, uh, that's been um, uh, a strong partner of ours since 1995. About half the team is uh, technical, so engineers that do implementation, support training, all of these things around supporting these great solutions. You know, we've invested heavily in, for example, staffing live support around, across the country, across all four time zones, and uh, providing about 12 hours a day of live support for, uh, for our clients. You know, looking at, at where we're at physically, we go as far east as, uh, as Ohio and uh, stretch all the way to Washington and Oregon and uh, a number of spots in between. And, and a number of these locations will do uh, sales, support training, all, the, all of these things. And the, the team we have is really uh, you know, supporting clients across the nation from, from all these different spots. Uh, you know, looking at, at the solution portfolio, uh, it's grown over the years, but you know, it, obviously the SolidWorks portfolio is a big chunk of it. Uh, the extended to sell portfolio, uh, Stratasys for 3D printers, Creaform industrial uh, scanners, and uh, most recently Roland prototype mills, CNC mills, and desktop metal, uh, metal printers uh, as they're coming to market today. So today, what we're doing is uh, uh, kicking off with what's new for SolidWorks 2018. Take a short break, uh, part two, and then talk a little bit about 3D printing and, and scanning. And then at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A as well. So welcome to the 2018 SolidWorks product introduction. My name is Randy Simmons, uh, like Rich said. And uh, I'll be taking you through the presentation today. I'll have help from some other guys, uh, Brian, uh, K-Tool, uh, and a couple other guys. Um, so this release, obviously, just like others, brings new products, new functionality, um, new ways to work, new workflows inside of, of SolidWorks. Um, really, to take your product faster than ever from design to manufacturing. Uh, anybody know what release number this is for SolidWorks? I mean, obviously, it's 2018, but how, what version or how many releases of SolidWorks there's been? Any guesses? This is number 26. So there's been quite a few. Um, this year, one of the customers we're going to highlight and show some products and parts and assemblies from is a SolidWorks customer from Australia named Traca. So let's take a look at their product and what they make. SolidWorks website that you guys can check out to learn more about their company, or you can go to their website to see some of the great uh, products that they design inside of SolidWorks. Um, you'll likely find if you read that case study or up here on the screen that they face uh, some of the same challenges that you guys do in bringing your products to market. So these are some of the things we're going to take a look at as we go through. Basically, the true measure of a good product or a great product is if it is a great design, it gets built. So we're going to take a look at SolidWorks 2018 enhancements with these four topics in mind. Smart manufacturing, and this is really just the next generation of design and manufacturing processes. Next generation design, which is taking SolidWorks into the future for how designers work inside of the software. 
essential design tools, which is the core functionality of this release. And then finally, delivering great design, which is tools to produce your design deliverables and get the data outside of SolidWorks to people that need to see this to make the things. So let's dive right into the first topic, the smart manufacturing topic. So in 2018, SolidWorks puts the model or tries to put the model right at the center of your design and manufacturing process. So this provides a single source of intelligent information for many, many uh, sub things that you're going to do with it. One way we do this, obviously, is with MBD or our model-based definition tool. This has been around inside of SolidWorks for a few releases now. And uh, this really helps you get, company, get, your, get your products to marketing faster or to manufacturing faster uh, through, through de the design channel. So model-based definition in 2018 is more powerful than ever. As you can see here, these are some of the highlights. We're going to actually take a look at these enhancements uh, in these next few videos here. So on this uh, little cover part in the front, we're going to see that in SolidWorks 2018, we now support the application of datums to pattern features, something that we could not do before. And then we'll switch over to a finished part that has some more detail on it and see that uh, 3D notes are going to be a great way to convey extra information. This is stuff that would normally exist in a drawing title block or maybe even in a bill of material. So this can be shown now just on that, uh, that model with the model-based definition or PMI information. We can apply a, a general overall profile tolerance for the entire model, and we can put that in the note like you see here or even in a table cell. And this sets a standard value for all the unspecified surfaces. You can modify that value then through the standard GTAL block. Also in 2018, we now enabled the display of part level PMI at the assembly level. So in the past, you would have had to recreate any part level PMI in the assembly to see something like this. Now it just comes across as you see here. You can also remove the extra steps of creating corresponding PMI for floating or fixed fasteners uh, with a new auto pair tolerance tool as well. New PDF templates are included in the 2018 release. These have been overhauled to include some uh, more information. For example, you can publish notes, those 3D notes we talked about from SolidWorks over in that block in the PDF text field. Uh, different 3D views representing different configurations at the bottom, which we could not do before, just uh, different views in the past. Um, and then a new animated slideshow over on the far right that really brings your model to life going through some of those transitions and some of, some of those views. And finally, up at the top uh, in the notes area, we can show uh, details as configuration specific so you get to see an idea of the whole product versus just one default configuration of that product. So more information about the entire family of products. Obviously, in addition to PDF, we can also share MBD information through eDrawings. We've been able to do that for quite a while as well. And uh, there are new things in here. In the export process, we can choose whether to export step 242 files included in with this file. Obviously, then in eDrawings, there's a way to view those. Uh, down in the lower right is a pane that will pop up to view those step 242 files. So these uh, now contain fully intelligent annotations. Uh, that are machine readable by third-party applications like SolidWorks CAM or other things like that. In SolidWorks 2018, which we're seeing here, not in eDrawings, but in actual SolidWorks, we can import Step 242 files uh, along with Creo, Siemens NX, and CATIA files that have PMI or product manufacturing information in them. So we'll be able to see that inside of SolidWorks now. So SolidWorks MBD is really enabling smart manufacturing uh, and helping reduce production bottlenecks by getting your product to manufacturing a little faster with this information included. Brand new for SolidWorks 2018 is a tool called SolidWorks CAM. This is being introduced. It uh, came out last week, of course, when the 2018 product came out. And in addition to Traca, the video we showed, we're also going to feature some products from another company called Ring Brothers. Uh, they're a, a company out of Spring Green, Wisconsin. And in the next video here, they're going to show you how they use SolidWorks CAM uh, to help increase the, increase the quality of the parts they're producing. I'm Jim Ring. I'm half owner of the Ring Brothers. I'm Mike Ring, the other half owner of the Ring Brothers. The 69 Camaro we have behind us, actually the name of the car is G-Code. G-Code is really a language that you know our computers talk to our machines with. It's SolidWorks CAM to the middle. With all of the machining that went into this car, almost every single component, we thought it was appropriate to call this car G-Code. You know, that's kind of a testament to what these tools can do for you. 
SolidWorks helps me with the process from idea to actual product because it's not just a 3D program, it's not just a CAM program, it's, it's all one. It's so smooth to make changes. Our first hinge we ever manufactured was for a 69 Camaro. We decided to make a precision part with the use of SolidWorks and SolidWorks CAM that would allow this hood to go to the same spot every time. This hinge was developed to not only solve a problem that we had with the way they closed, but it also solved the problem I just actually wanted to look at them. SolidWorks CAM's tolerance-based machining makes the process from getting that idea out there we can quickly clicking on our dimensions and actually applying where we're going to press a bearing, where a thread point's going to be. So when we open and close that hinge, it's it's going to be right where it needs to be without binding. It's literally just clicking buttons and we're going on to the next part very quickly. I'm new to machining within the last year and a half. Without knowledge-based machining, bringing a thousand parts in house would be nearly impossible. A lot of the reasons we make our own parts here is because we feel that we can't find the quality and the look we're after. For us, uh, this is a new beginning, and with the help of SolidWorks, we're, I think we're actually building a lot cooler stuff. So, what is SolidWorks CAM? Well, SolidWorks CAM is an integrated two and a half axis milling and two axis lathe programming solution by SolidWorks. So this uses the technology of model-based definition and knowledge-based machining. And we feel that this will help you uh, improve your communication, reduce errors and reduce cycle times on your parts and increase product quality. SolidWorks CAM is powered by a company called CAMWorks. They've been a gold partner of SolidWorks for over 20 years now with integrated CAM solutions. And now every SolidWorks user is going to have a piece of this technology right inside of SolidWorks. So some of the highlights uh, include uh, automatic feature recognition, the ability to capture and reuse common operations. Uh, also, all the design changes can be automatically applied to the machining operations and the tool paths, and the tool is very easy to learn. So let's take a look here at uh, SolidWorks CAM and how we have this fully integrated knowledge-based CNC programming right inside of SolidWorks. So this is that hinge that the Ring Brothers were talking about and a piece off the bottom of that. So here you'll see that SOLIDWORKS generates CAM information and tool paths very fast. Using automatic feature recognition from the tree, uh, standard operations, strategies defined by you, uh, your best practices, you can get this machining information very quickly. Adjustments for step over, cut depth, uh, things like that, tool type uh, can obviously be applied as well. Uh, at any time, any additional machining operations can be added by you, not just with the feature recognition. Uh, created referencing other geometry in the model. Faces to machine, areas to avoid can be uh, defined without having to create additional reference geometry, just using the 3D model for this. And then SolidWorks CAM also has some very powerful simulation tools inside there to let you see what this is going to look like without having to physically go out and cut apart or before you ever make a prototype of this. Uh, it helps you find any areas that need further refinement where it's not going to be machined enough uh, or areas where you may run into a problem long before you ever physically do this. Obviously, any changes that you make to the SOLIDWORKS model uh, can be instantly applied to those machining operations, adjusting those cutter paths. So very, very quick and easy to evaluate parts this way, that to have a change, manufacture much er your manufacturing evaluation much earlier in development in this case. And then, as we mentioned, it also does uh, two-axis lathes as well. So this allows you to create CNC programs very fast and eliminate time-consuming CAM rework due to, to, due to design changes because it's all happening right inside the SOLIDWORKS software. Another really awesome thing about SOLIDWORKS CAM is that we can use all that PMI data or that MBD data embedded in the model to help us do tool paths. So this is just another example of how SOLIDWORKS does this model-centric idea, uh, expanding that out into manufacturing. So SOLIDWORKS CAM, as I mentioned, was released with SOLIDWORKS 2018 a couple weeks ago. Uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM is available in two packages, a standard version and a professional. Standard is included in all versions of SOLIDWORKS 2018 uh, for all customers who are on subscription. You get access to this. SOLIDWORKS CAM professionals will be available as an upgrade and include some added capabilities that you see here on the slide. 
All right, so one of the funny conflicts, I guess, if you want to call it that, that we've had in the past, since we had inspection and MBD both come along, is we'd go in somewhere and we'd, we'd show somebody MBD and we'd say, look at this MBD tool, it's so great, you don't need to make 2D drawings anymore, right? And then we'd go over and, oh, you want to see an inspection demo? Well, you got to have a 2D drawing to do that, right? So not anymore, because in inspection now we can leverage the power of MBD. So parts that have this PMI data or MBD data in there can now be used to generate first article inspection reports. You no, no longer need to have a 2D drawing of the model to be able to do inspection. So we recognize and extract that critical information from the model, like custom properties, dimensions, and so on. We're just choosing a template here where we'll suck out the, the custom property information from the model. Uh, then we go in and choose the types of 3D annotations that we want to balloon. You can either select all of them or, or individually select each one. And then in a matter of seconds, it'll go in and balloon these things for us and build the uh, table of characteristics for us that we'll see in just a second. We can automatically generate that first article inspection report. We can change any tolerances before that if we want to, and then it's just a matter of kicking that out to Excel, just like we would have done in the past off of a 2D drawing. So right off the SOLIDWORKS model that has the, the manufacturing data inside there. So you can create these in minutes without having to have a 2D drawing right off the 3D model, which is really neat. So this eliminates time and effort of creating 2D inspection drawings. You don't need to do that anymore. You can do off the 3D model. Now, there is also another tool called Inspection Standalone that comes with SOLIDWORKS Inspection. That was the add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. In the standalone tool, that's what you use to do non-SOLIDWORKS files. So we've added some more file types to this. Uh, before, it was just basically uh, picture files, TIFFs, uh, scans, PDFs, things like that. Now we have DWG and DXF files, CATIA files, and uh, PTC Creo files. So we can work directly on these 2D, native 2D drawing formats. Uh, so we don't have to do optical character recognition anymore. We can recognize the text and the, the, the numbers, the dimensions, right off the model. So let's take a look at this. So we're just going to directly import a 2D drawing into this inspection project. As I mentioned, CATIA v5, PTC Creo, or as in this case, a DWG file. Don't have to convert them into PDFs or TIFFs or anything first. So this one is a DWG file that we'll open. So we get you know, complete drawing with all the dimensions and everything on there. No longer have to do optical character recognition to this. We'll just zoom up, use the new Smart Extract tool to grab which dimensions we want to add balloons to and which ones we want to put in our bill of characteristics. It knows what the tolerances are. We can obviously override those on the side if we need to. Uh, but all that information is there without having to do optical character recognition to, to get this off of a TIFF file or something like that. So DWGs, PDFs uh, that have selectable text also can be done like this. So you simply select these or box select as they did in a couple examples there, and that adds those to the bill of, bill of characteristics. Um, this works, like I said, the same way with a PDF drawing if it has selectable text on a different layer. So <laughs> definitely faster than ever. Uh, if you ever tried this before with the optical character recognition, this is much, much better. Obviously, then you're ready to produce your first article inspection report. A new, cool new thing we can do in here is do something called a document snapshot. Instead of just having the, just the Excel report, we can grab some screenshots of some particular views if you need to and include those inside the report as well. So all that information required to inspect the part plus any additional associated drawing views can be captured and shown uh, when somebody looks at that report. So obviously here we're removing the risk of data translation errors, let you create these reports much faster than ever. Greater clarity as well, having those views in there. Now there is another awesome addition in the inspection standalone tool, uh, the ability to compare 3D models on top of each other, this revision management tool, and also use a 3D model um, as, as the data for this instead of just using a 2D drawing like we saw. So, we can use a, any 3D file, a CATIA v5, a PTC Creo, 3D XML, or some of the file types. Obviously, for SOLIDWORKS ones, you would do that with the add-in. These are for non-SOLIDWORKS files. You would do it with a standalone. And once this model's been loaded, any PMI data uh, that's already in that model can be displayed, obviously, and then accessed uh, for ballooning and included in the bill of characteristics. So all we have to do is just select one of these, and it'll get added, added below, as you've seen in the other examples with the 3D models, using that same smart extract feature. So just like with the 2D inspection drawing, once we've got the bill of characteristics complete, it's just a matter of exporting to Excel, grabbing any screenshots if we want with that document screenshot uh, capture tool, 
and exporting out that Excel file. I mentioned uh, this tool also allows you to compare uh, two models. So the characteristics table below will highlight uh, changes. It'll show uh, modifications to the original in orange, uh, any that have been removed in red, and then the graphics area shows all of your characteristics and any new ones in green up there. So a nice way to compare two models. So the inspection add-in and the inspection standalone tool uh, really provide you with some great tools to expand this idea of model-centric design all the way to manufacturer through to your quality department in this case. All right, so like we showed you in this section, you can put the model at the center of your design. We think this is really the next generation of design here. So let's talk about the next generation of design inside of SolidWorks, uh, new functionality that we have inside of here. So we're going to show you functional tools that you guys need to tackle day-to-day -day work in this section. So the first thing that you'll notice in 2018 when you start it up is a new login option in the upper right-hand corner. You can now directly access a few things like your My SolidWorks uh, account from this user interface. And more importantly, when you log in, it means your settings can go with you. So you can go to somebody else's machine, log in, just like you would with Google Chrome, and you would get all your bookmarks. Same idea here, you would get all your options and settings on their machine when you log in. A lot of times, companies have multiple products from SolidWorks, multiple services. Uh, so we've got different licensing options, right? We've got standalone licensing, network licensing, and something new called online licensing that we'll talk about in a minute. And then we've also got different license types. We've got the perpetual licenses. We've got the term licensing. So it can be hard to manage all that. Well, we've got a new tool called the Admin Portal, which is an online tool to help a user or a, an admin, in this case, manage the assets that they have. An administrator can go in and see what products they have, manage users, assign users to certain products, see when those products are going to expire, and more importantly, finally now, get a report of all their assets. That's been asked uh, quite a bit of times of how to do something like that. So that's in the new tool there. We know that a lot of users want to access SolidWorks on multiple machines. So I mentioned something called online licensing. Um, so a standalone license can now be set to an online license. You can change it to an online license. And what does this really do for you? Well, this lets you install on as many machines as you want, basically. And instead of having to run around and activate, deactivate all the time through email or through the internet to do that, you just log in. So that's another thing that login window is going to be used for. As long as you're connected to the internet, you go to that new machine, log in, it'll deactivate the other session automatically for you on whatever machine it was on, and you'll be able to use SolidWorks on that machine. If you close a session of SolidWorks, it will automatically deactivate that one, and then when you go somewhere else, you activate that session as well. And then there's also an option uh, for traveling users. You can use an offline mode uh, to keep you using SolidWorks even if you don't have access to the internet. Uh, obviously, you could not go to another machine then and, re and activate that one one at a time, but flexibility to control where you're using it with the new online licensing. All right, so this topic is really neat. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, the launch of a lot of brand new touch devices in, in the last few years. Uh, Microsoft Surface Book, uh, ThinkPad Yoga P40s, the Wacom Cintiq tablets and things like that. Anybody trying to use a touch screen or anybody try, have tried to use a touch screen for SolidWorks in the past? Uh, it works, right? You can zoom, pan, rotate, uh, but that's really about it. You, in the past, you wouldn't really want to try to design very much uh, with the touchscreen. Uh, touchscreen gestures actually came out in SolidWorks way back in 2010. So for, for the last seven releases, now eight releases, you've been able to do zoom, pan, rotate, and use a touchscreen to, to do things. But it, it, it wasn't near as productive or as fun as right just grabbing the mouse and trying to do it there. So there's two new things, a new touch mode, um, and then another thing called touch sketching that's going to make it really practical to use a touch screen monitor. So let's take a look at the touch mode. So we enable this touch mode from the view pull down and turn on this option. This gives us a new vertical toolbar over here on the left side. If you're right handed, you can move it to the right side if you're left handed. And the idea here is then you can work with both hands on the screen. You'll be doing interactions on the graphic screen with one hand and accessing this toolbar to help you here. Because a lot of times when you're working on one of these computers, you don't have access to a keyboard or a mouse. So things like control, escape, that's what's going to be on that toolbar. So normal zoom pan rotate is done on the graphic screen when you touch. Uh, but in the past, you really didn't have any way of moving individual pieces. We can turn on one of the buttons on the toolbar there, a lock rotation, which then lets us grab individual parts or subassemblies and pull and drag on them. So in this case, we're going to pull out this drawer and see a range of motion just by touching on the touch screen and grabbing that, seeing if it hits the handle of the stove. 
When we turn that mode off, then we can go back and zoom pan rotate on the graphic screen. Um, mouse gestures, of course, are another great way of accessing commands when you don't have access to the keyboard with the, with the touch screen. So just to hold down, uh, we'll pop that up and then you can drag. We're going to zoom in, do a zoom to area, for example, on this faucet. Uh, invoke that command from the mouse gestures. Editing commands are, are very easy to get to, mimicking the same things you would do with the mouse. You just touch on a face of that model and you get your left click menu. The little arrow at the side is going to get us our right click menu as well. The icons on the left click menu are more spread out, which makes it more friendly for a touch screen uh, to be able to not hit the wrong button. And then in this case, if we want to change the configuration, we'll use the same drop down, say OK, just like you would with a mouse. So very, very nice. The final change we want to do in this design is we want to make that shelf taller. So we're going to use another tool. If we hold down for longer than two seconds on the touch screen, it pops up this selection magnifier. I get a couple new buttons over here on the toolbar to zoom in and zoom out. And I can move with my one hand on the screen and highlight something and then zoom in and out with the magnifier buttons on the touch toolbar. Whatever is in the crosshairs stays highlighted. I get access to my left click menu and I'll go in and edit. It's going to be hard to edit if I don't have a keyboard, right? Well, as soon as I touch in a field that needs numbers, a number pad is going to pop up and I can access those. So you don't have to use that big giant keyboard that pops up on the screen from the operating system that takes up half the screen. Uh, we have that right inside the, the number fields. So very, very nice to be able to go in and show off an assembly, play with an assembly, and work around an assembly. So this new touch mode, it's a powerful set of productivity tools for working on touchscreen devices, obviously. Like I said, in addition to touch mode, we also introduced something called touch sketching. So this is going to give us the, uh, the ability to actually draw right on the screen, like with pen and paper. So you can use uh, your finger, you can use a pen or a stylus to do this, uh, and you're working directly in a SOLIDWORKS sketch. So we're going to open up a part file, just start a sketch or edit a sketch in this case that's on a, a planar face. And then we have some new tools, a sketch ink toolbar up here on the command manager. We'll set our pen uh, style with a color and a, a line thickness. And then we're gonna, just going to come in and start drawing on the screen with your finger or with a, a pen or stylus in here. There's a couple of different modes. Uh, the mode that we have on tur turned on right now is going to try to refine these into arcs or lines as we draw. But these are just freehand curves on the screen. Um, we're going to turn on another mode called Auto Sketch Entities and it'll do the same thing but as we draw with this one it's going to convert them actually into sketch entities. Arcs and lines and circles inside of a SolidWorks sketch that we can do stuff with, extrude with, cut with. References like uh, finding the center there or grabbing and dragging and snapping. Uh, relations can be applied just by touching and pulling. Um, you can draw squares with this. You can draw lines, arc circles with this. We can also take that freehand geometry, select it all, and turn it into sketch entities if we want to, uh, back and forth. Once this is sketch entities, now we can do things like fillets. We can pull and drag just like any other sketch uh, like, like you would think inside of SolidWorks. Um, we're going to take these two pieces then, once we've got them to the shape we want, we'll mirror these around the construction line that we have, and then we can go ahead and select those and extrude with those. So, you know, I don't know that you'd want to design precision uh, detailed things this way, but definitely for freeform shapes where it's easier for you to come in and draw on the screen, this is going to be very, very nice and fun to do. Um, you could try to do detailed things, but I, I still think mouse is going to be best for, for some things. This is going to be better for freeform shapes. So that's the uh, touch sketching mode. So it allows you to create rapid, rapid creation of design ideas you know, in the office or on the go with a, a portable type of machine, touch screen. All right, so we're going to talk about mesh modeling here, but not the kind of meshing that you think about with simulation. So Ktool is going to come up in a little bit and talk about simulation, but not yet. This is a different kind of meshing, right? So the mesh data we're talking about here is mesh from, a, from scanned data, from a scanned source. So new functionality here um, will get us uh, something called a graphics body that we can mix and match with, with, this, with our solid bodies. Um, and then you can see some of the highlights here. Let's just take a look at uh, the video and see some of these functions that we can do. So a new variety of formats, STL, OBJ, uh, additive manufacturing files, those types can be open now. So the mesh geometry, first off, supports material textures, and shading and real view appearances. So the mesh models just look like a real SOLIDWORKS model now instead of looking like a bunch of triangles, uh, which is nice. We can do section views on that uh, to, in any graphical mesh data and see inside there as well. So this allows you to better visualize and fully understand the mesh. Definitely doesn't stop there. Uh, we can do a lot more. 
we've got a new surface to, or mesh to surface feature. So here we'll just pick uh, some facets of a, a flat face in this example. And notice that we're not going to have to pick all of them. We're just going to pick some of the defining facets. And then tell it to create a planar face, a cylindrical face, a, a spherical face, or a cone-shaped face. This is going to be the flat face, selecting a few of those. We hit Calculate, and it's going to grab the rest of those for us and build a nice planar face. Um, they're going to go in and build a cylindrical face with those two holes. Of course, once you get some surfaces, you can use any of our surfacing tools like offsetting, copying, trimming to, to do something with those surfaces if you're trying to build off of that or, or get some geometry to do something with off of that mesh. We're also introducing, as I mentioned, a new thing called a mesh body type in 2018. So any graphical mesh can be converted into one of these mesh bodies just through the right-click menu. So mesh bodies are very similar to a solid body. There, there are some differences, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, but they can be, uh, have properties associated with them. They can be sectioned. They can have uh, you know, density applied to them and then have a weight and so on. So they are a little different than a solid body, though. I can come in here and sketch on one of these mesh bodies, and I can actually access and, and reference things in that uh, mesh. So draw a circle to those points, draw some lines from there, and dimension from that stuff in the mesh. And we'll go ahead and, and, and extrude this, right? This one, what we're extruding here is going to be a solid body because it's the sketch geometry that we drew. We're going to extrude the solid. But I really want to take that and meld it with the mesh body. Well, I can convert my solid now that I extruded into a mesh body, and now do Booleans with the two mesh bodies. So subtract the one out of the other, take the common intersection of the two, those kinds of things, just like I did a cutout in the mesh, even though that was never converted into a solid. So that's pretty cool. This just allows you to take any geometry you've created and Boolean it or meld it together with that mesh geometry, which is neat. Then, of course, just like any other SOLIDWORKS file, you, you don't have to convert this into a, a full solid uh, to use it. I can stick this into an assembly just like any other SOLIDWORKS file, made it into place using faces and things like that with this new mesh body type, and, and use this part without having to convert it to a solid. So really cool. You can directly just use that mesh data in your SOLIDWORKS designs, in this assembly, for example. So this will allow you to break design barriers that previously existed, allowing you to leverage that mesh data in, in, in a variety of places and formats uh, that you couldn't do that before. All right, last thing we're going to take a look at here before we get into the SIM portion is 3D interconnect. So this was a new way of referencing foreign CAD files rather than translating them. This was introduced in 2017. You may have messed with this some in 2017. In 2018, we have some more file types we can import in, so STEP, IGES, and ASIS files. And these files no longer need to be translated. You just reference these models just like we did with the native CAD files in 2017. Uh, works the exact same way. Other enhancements that take these third-party files further is we can now choose to bring in reference planes, unconsumed sketches and curves, and use that data uh, in, in our SOLIDWORKS design. And then we can also bring across custom properties from these files, too, ensuring that a bill of material or a title block on a drawing is never going to be incorrect or that you don't have to type additional information in. So that metadata can come across, too. So nice new functionality in there. All right, enough for me for now. Let's uh, let Ktool take a look at some of the new stuff in the simulation package for 2018. Thank you. Yep, there you go. Appreciate it. <clears throat> all right, good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Kay Tool, and uh, I'm going to be talking about all the great new things that are happening inside of simulation. And so the first thing that I do want to get into is a topology study. This is one of the more... Uh, one of the most versatile tools that I've seen yet that uh, SOLIDWORKS has actually put out. And the idea behind the topology study is you want to let SOLIDWORKS do some of the thinking for you. Now, we've always, always asked, hey, you can run these analyses, but why don't you tell me what shape it's going to be at the end of it? What is the final product going to be? And so that's the idea behind topology study. So we give it all of the boundary conditions, you know, where our forces are going to be applied, where things are going to be held down. And uh, we give it all of the other boundary conditions, especially with the fixtures and things of that nature. And then secondly, we also tell it what we want to an uh, analyze to and optimize to as well. So we have the options of doing a best stress or minimal displacement, things of that nature. And so you can tell SOLIDWORKS a lot of this uh, information to get you the final product. So what we're putting in here right now is I'm telling SOLIDWORKS, give me the best possible shape 
and take away 70% of my material that, I've, uh, that I currently have and then show me what that shape is going to be. All right? So now once we tell it, there's a few more things that we still have to give uh, to tell SolidWorks because that's going to give us uh, a better design at the end of it. We can also tell it how it's going to be manufactured as well, whether it's going to be forged or if it's going to be uh, machined. So giving it this uh, type of information, as you can see here, will give us a better outlook on what the shape, final shape is going to be. Now, when you, uh, once we do give it all of this information, as you can see, it's going to hit the OK. And looking at the final results, we can see where the mass needs to be uh, taken away. So you kind of see a pixelated image right now, but that's telling you exactly where the mass can be taken away. And then we can also take a look at kind of a, a smoother shape as well. So if you wanted to take, uh, you know, get a more of an ergonomic design, you can actually take that into consideration as well. And then, of course, taking away more or uh, less of the mass, that's also possible at this point. So, you know, just because SolidWorks tells you something doesn't mean it's always perfect. You can always do your own work on top of it. Now, with all of this information, SolidWorks does give you some of, uh, of the stress information. Now, taking this, and also now applying it to your design. So SolidWorks gives you a nice little shape. This is kind of the optimized shape to, based on the boundary conditions that you applied. Well, at this point, we take this information, we overlay it right on top of the part like a 3D JPEG, and now we can start working with it and taking away, doing some extrusions, doing some cuts to, f uh, to create the physical model, or I should say, the virtual model that, uh, that SolidWorks told us that would work for our boundary conditions. So again, topology study is the kind of thing that you know, we've always been asking, why can't SolidWorks do some of the thinking for us? This is what they've uh, come up with, and this is going to definitely revolutionize the way you design your product. Some of the smaller things that SolidWorks kind of uh, puts out just to make sure that you're as productive as possible. All those little clicks and tricks that you actually accomplish uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, they all always have to be minimized, right? Because that's all about time. Let's talk about stress singularities uh, first off. This year, actually, SolidWorks gave, uh, came out with the ability to help us detect stress singularities, where we have all these stress risers that are occurring in our model, and yet we don't know why it's actually doing this. And so SolidWorks came out with this tool called a stress singularity detector. Now, the problem is, is that even though we now know that it's a stress singularity, that we still need to figure out what the solution is. There are two possible solutions, whether we can refine the mesh or add a fillet. And so that's that big button at the bottom corner of the screen that you're seeing, is that we can hit that button. SolidWorks will automatically reduce the, amount of ele uh, reduce the element size around that corner and then tell you whether it can or can't be solved with just that type of a solution. So you're kind of left with just a simple option. I'll just throw in a fillet. So taking these extra steps of letting the software do some of the thinking, that's kind of the benefit of, of stress singularity detection. So any designer will uh, definitely need some assistance with that. I know I've seen that in many t uh, types of locations. And then the next thing is importing studies. We've all been able to copy a study, create a, a duplicate, and then run the analysis on it. Well, every time you copy the study, sometimes you have to drag and drop boundary conditions. It's a time staking process, especially if it's a nonlinear analysis or a dynamic where you got a lot of data to copy over. So now we can choose to select individual items or all of the items, all the boundary conditions, to copy over all at once. So it's more of a singular graphical interface that you can actually uh, choose and pick and choose your uh, items that you want to bring over, thereby making it a lot easier and faster to work with. All right, and so now let's talk about some pin connectors. That's the uh, that's kind of like the bane of the existence, right? It's uh, for any FEA person, especially it's like fillets, where you can apply these little connectors in all the different locations, and we have to do it one at a time before. Now we can do all of the different pins within the single user interface, and also not on top of that is that we can select edges as well. And so you'll see here next that uh, the user actually selected the uh, corner of the. Uh, the hole there. And so with that edge selection, you can now use shell elements uh, to be able to put a pin connector through before we weren't able to do that. So again, simple things. Now here's another thing that won't really wow you. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not the biggest thing. So only if you are running these long simulations will this actually prove to be extremely versatile. So when you are running a dynamic analysis, a nonlinear analysis, something that's going to take hours to do, uh, what SolidWorks will do is it will go ahead and email you when it's finished. 
So whether you're in the car, whether you're taking a quick break, whatever the case may be, you can tell SolidWorks to go ahead and email me so then you can just uh, get it on your phone saying your study is done. Uh, whether it's happening virtually or not, you can finally find out uh, very quickly that it is happening that way. All right, so some of the smaller things, I, uh, I hope that was actually helpful. Now let's talk about flow simulation very quick. I only got a couple of slides here on this. So <clears throat> talking about uh, interaction between fluid and fluid, so the image that you saw there, the green is the water coming up and the air being displaced. So that interaction between two different types of fluids is now uh, available using a free surface, uh, free, free surface flow and doing a cyclic symmetry, just making your life a little bit easier. We've been able to do planar. Now we can do cyclical uh, symmetry uh, within the flow uh, regions. And then uh, definitely FFE, uh, FFT calculations for your noise predictions as well. So uh, they've advanced that as well. All right, <clears throat> so some of the great things, of course, to me that, free, uh, that fluid interaction is one of the biggest things. Uh, and talking about SOLIDWORKS plastics now, and there's a couple of things that uh, really will hit your eye. Uh, talking about the user interface, especially with the mesh, everything was all kind of jumbled up in a single uh, uh, menu, in a single box with different types of meshes, whether you had a cavity mesh, you had your cooling lines or heating lines, all of that was all in a single box. It's now separated. Calculating the clamping force, it's been improved a little bit more uh, so that it can, uh, so you can tell SOLIDWORKS how it's going to be uh, ejected. Your part is going to be ejected through this. Uh, and then clipping planes, giving you the ability to analyze different angles, no longer just the front, top, and right uh, planes to section your uh, volume with. The short shot calculations are also uh, been updated so that you, don't, you no longer have to wait too long uh, to see the, the results here. So these are some of the great enhancements. I hope they will uh, help you on your designs. All right, so the next topic we're going to take a look at is the essential design tools. So these are tools that you guys are going to use every day to uh, work inside of SOLIDWORKS and make your process faster, so how you work in, in the tool. Um, as you know, SOLIDWORKS is very committed to taking the overhead of, of you know, getting the software out of the way of, of what you do every day and making uh, smart tools to help you work faster, the, the experts and the wizards and things that they put in there. So let's take a couple, couple looks at uh, how SOLIDWORKS 2018 is going to help with this. So some enhancements just in the user interface uh, are going to help your everyday productivity. We're going to take a look at quite a few of these in detail. First thing you're going to notice when you open up a file or start a new part is the welcome screen. And this is kind of a one-stop shop to help you get right to work inside of SOLIDWORKS. You can create new parts, assemblies, or drawings from here, obviously, access to your templates. Uh, but recent files, recent folders, uh, links to resources is all in here. You can get to My SOLIDWORKS, et cetera, right from here. A few tabs across the top, uh, links to learning, tutorials, and samples. These appear on the Learn tab. And then you have immediate access to technical alerts and bulletins and updates and service packs on the alerts tab. So one place to go uh, to, get, to get all those things. Um, when you open an assembly, we have a new file open progress indicator uh, that's going to let us know how long it's taking to load our design and why, why, what it's doing and what it's working on. Also, it's going to tell you how your last open time, which is kind of cool, the last time you opened this assembly, so you have an idea of how long to expect to wait for that. Um, after you get that open, there's going to be a lot of cool tools to analyze why it took that time to open. So which factors are slowing you down, things like that are going to be important. And this new assembly performance tool is going to give you even more detail than we had before. So this is going to show checks like open time, uh, shaded image quality, uh, number of graphics triangles in these parts, and so on. Here we show that several parts have been set to the highest image quality. Uh, and we need to adjust that down to get better performance out of this assembly. If you want even deeper insight into those problems, you can use our assembly visualization tool, which now has some pre-ready-made columns for those same kinds of things, graphics triangles, shaded image quality, and so on. And here we're just going in and color coding uh, the parts that are, are, are performing the slowest in a certain color and the, to the parts that are performing faster. We see maybe that this USB outlet here has too much detail for this, the size of the part that it is in our assembly. We switch to a simplified configuration, and now that turns blue. And then we can go on to the next red part and see why that may be taking so long to load or, or slowing us down. So right from the assembly visualization, some pre-made columns ready to go for that. 
We've also got something simple, uh, a top level transparency option, something that was kind of hard to do before. I just want to make everything transparent. You don't have to dig down into subassemblies or anything anymore. You can do that right from the top, one step to just make everything transparent. Silly little thing, but it's going to save you a lot of time. Right? A lot of people use folders to organize things in the tree. Now we go in and color code these folders to let you know if there are suppressed parts in here or hidden parts in here and show that, reflect that in the color of the folder. Uh, you can see some examples there. Uh, mouse gestures, a lot of people use mouse gestures. We can now increase that up to 12 gestures on, on the wheel um, or just down to two uh, vertical or horizontal gestures if you want those. Um, you can also copy gestures between modes and then there's this little chart that you can even print out and stick up on your wall if you want to remind you what your mouse gestures are. Um, it's common that when you're zoomed into a model uh, and you want to do a box select or a lasso select that you got to zoom back out and touch in empty space to start your drag because if you start your box or your lasso on the model it's going to select that part. Uh, you no longer are going to have to zoom out and pick an empty space. We've got a select over geometry option. There's a keyboard shortcut, the T key is the default shortcut. You can obviously change that to anything you want, or you can get to it through a right click, select over geometry, and then you can start right on the geometry for box selections or lasso selections. You can even use a control key to do multiple selections. So constant focus, uh, SOLIDWORKS constant focus on increasing your productivity uh, is what these enhancements are going to, what you're going to see from these enhancements. Sketches, obviously, are the fundamental building blocks for, for everything that we do inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so we need these to be intuitive and productive. So some of the things we're going to take a look at here is in 3D sketching, uh, new capabilities and flexibility when you modify things like arcs and splines. So we're going to finish the design of this support bar in the back here. Um, and you can switch the tangency direction of, of an arc. For example, the tangency came out wrong on this one. All we got to do is go to a right click and flip the tangency in this example. In the past, you would have had to delete this and redraw that arc the right way. Now it's just a right click to flip it. When we are in a 3D sketch, now we can build symmetry by mirroring 3D sketch entities, something that was not possible before. And in 3D sketches or even 2D sketches, we can now use a plane to do the mirroring. So you no longer have to draw a construction line or a center line to mirror in a 3D sketch or a 2D sketch. Couldn't even mirror in a 3D sketch before, right? Now we can. So this allows you to build symmetry into your design. Uh, makes sketch geometry much, much easier no matter what you're designing. This is going to be even, even better, obviously, for people designing weldments, uh, being able to do these things in 3D sketches and mirror and, and so on in a 3D sketch. So powerful enhancements to these, these 3D sketch tools. Um, in the area of assemblies, uh, we're going to take a look at a couple things here. One of the things uh, when you do a linear pattern of components in 2018, you now have the ability to add an optional rotation step. So we choose the number of instances to, uh, that we want to pattern, and then we get this optional rotate, and we can set a degree for how to rotate around here. So this will give you even more flexibility in things you can design, much, much easier without having to do uh, other methods that you would have had to done in the past to get this, uh, copy with mates or something like that. This is just done right in the pattern command. Um, sometimes when you're trying to add a mate, uh, you need to add a mate to a face or a surface that's hidden, and that can be very challenging. So we can hold down the Alt key when we're in the mate command now in 2018 to temporarily hide a face. This is like the select other uh, tool, but much better when you're in a mate to temporarily dig down through a model, pick the face you want, and get that thing mated into place. So that's the Alt key. If you're dealing with parts of different units or imported parts, sometimes it's impossible to get uh, two concentric mates, in this case, to line up just because things are off due to the translation or the units or they don't match up, right? Obviously, you can move the holes or move the pins to make this work, but in 2018, we have a new option to do something called a misaligned mate. Um, this will allow you to do, solve those two concentric mates, even though they are misaligned. You can switch between one or the other or float between the, the two holes in this case. Um, you'll see this information in the feature tree. You'll see this information when you apply those mates that they are misaligned. There is an option uh, to set the deviation of what is okay for misaligned mate and what's not okay for these. And then you can even disable this option completely if you don't want anything to do with it um, in the system options. But uh, in the tree there, you'll see that these are uh, applied with a misaligned mate. So uh, the ability to make small changes, or this creates it so you don't have to make small changes to legacy parts or imported parts. You can just go ahead and get them mated into place. 
Exploded views, obviously a great way to communicate an idea inside of SolidWorks. Now, in 2018, we can create automatic explode lines using the explode line tool. Automatically, no longer have to draw these in place, right? About time for that one. It defaults to the uh, center of the bounding box. You can drag the leader to anywhere, any face on that part if you want to. Um, you can do it on, in the case of those bolts, do it on one part, it applies it to the other identical parts, so you don't have to do that on each and every part. And in these screws, the same thing here. So automatic uh, creation of those explode lines is going to make it much, much nicer to see what's going on in your exploded view. So these are just some of the enhancements to assemblies um, that are going to improve your day-to-day your -day productivity inside of here and allow you to build assemblies faster than you ever have before. All right, let's bring Brian Cook up. He's going to talk about uh, the electrical and PCB products that we have inside of SolidWorks. Thank you, Randy. Like you said, my name is Brian Cook. I'm the electrical specialist here at CATI. I'll be talking to you for the next few minutes about what's new in SolidWorks Electrical and SolidWorks PCB. So 2018 brings a number of exciting enhancements to SolidWorks Electrical. First off, we're going to continue to expand the PDM integration. It's going to be a new mechanical style PDM connector. Next, the SolidWorks Electrical Connector Wizard has been integrated with the Routing Library Manager. So all the tools that you need to prepare your files for routing are in one place now. SolidWorks Electrical Schematic also introduces a new deferred update mode. This is great for anyone who is working with really large projects or they're trying to work across a VPN. Uh, you just kind of work locally and then push it to the SQL database. Additionally, in schematics, we have the addition of new project attributes, custom classification capabilities, and multi-level terminal definitions to make your project design even faster and easier than ever. With 2018, we've got some new tools to manage your drawing styles, uh, your uh, attribute appearances. Uh, these will allow you to change how your marks look, like, such as your component marks, across your entire project rather than having to go to each individual symbol to edit the font, for example. Uh, we also have in the wire style manager a new uh, option to, by default, use equipotential or wire labels instead of the wire marks. We have some, some enhancements that will provide greater control over your wire mark generation, your component mark sorting, and the uh, wire management for non-native imports. Uh, so you can now specify that your wires will be numbered uniquely by location through the wire group options rather than just being limited to the project, the book, or the file. Also, if you delete a wire and redraw it and then number it, uh, which, which number is it going to get? In the past, it would automatically just take the first available mark, uh, but now you can specify that you'd like it to take the highest currently used number and increment by one. Uh, that way you don't accidentally end up using numbers that you had pre previously used. Also, the component sorting now will intelligently place number 2 over 11 because it sees it as number 11 and not 1-1. One, one. So it's a natural sort now, uh, which is a commonly asked for enhancement. And when you're importing your non-native legacy schematics, um, such as DWG files, uh, we can now reconnect gaps in wire connections during the import process. That's a, a common issue where wires will connect to other wires using a dot. Uh, in the import wizard, you can now specify an offset radius so that it will see those wires and reconnect them properly. So this should allow you greater flexibility when defining your project uh, marks and, and bringing in legacy data which will, uh, so that all your documents meet your requirements with less rework. In 2018, it's now even easier to organize your components in a fashion that works best for your business with new custom classifications and some additional manufacturer parts fields. So we can create custom classes and subclasses, for example, creating a class specifically for just your 38999 connectors. There's also some new fields in the manufacturer parts to make sure that they contain all the information that you need. Uh, one of those is a datasheet field that will link your uh, PDF files directly to the manufacturer part for quick reference. User data fields will also be available to you if you're not utilizing the ERP data connection uh, ability of SolidWorks Electrical. So then you can use those fields as a custom search field when you're searching for your uh, parts, doing some filtering. 
Cables also now have a field for putting in a default cable length, which is great for those who are not utilizing the 3D routing capabilities of SolidWorks Electrical 3D. And finally, modifying your existing symbols and attributes is even easier now. Enhancements to the Edit Symbol tab will uh, have added a, a Modify Index command. This will quickly modify the index and the language code for your attributes while editing your symbols. All this will allow you to create complex designs with ease using a detailed library that was customized for your specific business. And there are a number of improvements to our terminal strips. You can now add manufactured parts directly to the top level terminal strip, such as accessories that do not need a footprint re representation. Accessories that do, such as your end stops and spacers, can be added directly to the terminal strip editor. And they're then going to be represented in your bill of material, on your terminal strip drawings, and your 2D cabinet layout drawings for simple, accurate documentation. You can further define the appearance of each individual terminal and accessory through the terminal strip configuration manager and the manufacturer parts. This makes it so that even though we're still generating your terminal strip drawing for you, it's more customized to look the way that you like it to. With those new tools, customizing all aspects of your terminals to represent your real life strips is fast and easy, ensuring your designs are never behind schedule. So SOLIDWORKS PCB came out last year. And since then, SOLIDWORKS has been continuously providing some updates, uh, improving the performance of it. And in 2018, we've added some new tools for uh, symbol and footprint creation. We've improved the collaboration security and as well as, well as improving the communication between the ECAD and MCAD uh, pieces of software. So one of the new tools is an IPC footprint wizard. Uh, in 2018, that's going to bring you automated symbol creation based on parametric data that is in compliance with IPC formulas. So all you have to do is pick a family from an extensive list of parts, and the wizard will take over building a perfect footprint for you. Icing on the cake is it will also uh, put in the step representation of the part to be included with the symbol. Along the same lines, we have a schematic symbol wizard where you specify how many pins, the, the uh, format that you want your symbol to look like, and then you can utilize copy and paste to quickly name all of your pins, and you now have a, a schematic symbol to place. Those two tools will allow you to streamline and automate your symbol creation. Improving some of the collaboration, uh, we've always had the ability to have variations for the boards that you're designing. You can mark parts as do not install. Now that will also transfer transfer over to the assembly that it's going to generate in SOLIDWORKS so that anything marked do not install will be suppressed. Also when you're moving your components in SOLIDWORKS, the uh, z-axis movement has now been restricted so that you don't accidentally push a component to the other side of the board. Uh, also the whole locations will move with you. Optionally you can unlock that z-axis change. But this should eliminate any potential uh, data integrity issues that could arise during that collaboration. And finally, uh, SOLIDWORKS mission is to provide you know, all of you with the software that is a productivity booster. And as you can see, in 2017 when this was released for a benchmark board with 900 parts, about 13 by 15 inches, it took 45 minutes to generate that first assembly. Uh, so SOLIDWORKS got to work. Around the middle of 2017, they brought that down to 20 minutes. And now in 2018, that first assembly creation only takes six minutes. And any updates, such as moving a component, uh, regenerating that assembly will take 35 seconds to produce that update. So that's a 75% increase in speed, thus reducing the time and produ providing you with a measurable improvement. So from improving the out-of-the-box and launch experience to focusing on core parts and assemblies to improving the surrounding tools that are essential to your design process, SOLIDWORKS 2018 is delivering essential functionality to speed up the design process. So as we move to our final stop on the roadmap, introducing SOLIDWORKS 2018, uh, the focus is going to shift to design deliverables. Uh, so I'm going to bring back up Ryan to take a look at what that brings. All right, hello everybody. So let's quickly review a couple of our favorite new features in PDM uh, 2018. The first uh, is design branch and merge. So what this uh, tool does for us is allows us to create variations on existing designs. So this allows you to create uh, you know, different design variations to test out new design ideas. It allows you to do uh, ECN trials in order to be able to test changes in design before approving them for production. It also makes it a little bit easier to work with existing uh, external vendors. So 
what this uh, tool does is that if you are using Cyrus PDM and you're familiar with tools like Copy Tree and Move Tree, this allows us to uh, extend this to the design change process as well. So let's take a look. So when we are exploring new design ideas, it is important to uh, refine our designs. And now with the new uh, the branch and merge capability of SOLIDWORKS PDM, this task is a breeze. Regardless of its release date, parts, assemblies, or drawings can be branched and the structure is recognized. The destination folder can be defined as well as the prefix or suffix for the file name, and individual files can be included or excluded from the branch. The branch file is identical to its source. So here are two other branches that have been created and refined. When you decide on the preferred design, it could be merged back. SOLIDWORKS PDM recognizes the source file and merges it as a new version, even if the source file was renamed or moved. When the assembly is opened, we can see that the refined design is in a place now. And now with the branch and merge tool, error-prone uh, copy and uh, change and override techniques are no longer needed. So another new feature that's come along with SOLIDWORKS 2018 and SOLIDWORKS PDM is the ability to integrate our revision table into our change process. So this allows you to enter your revision data directly into the print and have it automatically sync with the PDM card. This also allows you to search on the information and better control your change process. It also intelligently assigns the revision based on the schema you have set up inside of PDM. So let's take a look. So tracking design changes is often done with revision tables. And now the revision table has a direct integration with SOLIDWORKS PDM. As a new revision is added, you can notice that the revision number is indicated as asterisk. And that's because the change has not yet been approved. And the revision number is controlled by SOLIDWORKS PDM. So comments can be added to the revision table, but the approved field remains blank. When the drawing is checked in, all the information is extracted from the drawing, including information from the revision table. After the approval process is completed, the workflow transition sets the revision number, and the approver and uh, all the updated fields on the drawing will come through. And the calls on the tile block will all be updated to match the, the next revision. It's all up to date. So it's never been easier to explore the new design ideas with, with Branch and Merge and the new bi-directional communication between the tables inside your, your revision tables and the information that's inside of PDM. Make sure everybody's on the same page. So in addition to a couple of the new features with inside PDM, we also have a tool that is being retired. So for a lot of folks over the years have been using a tool called Workgroup PDM. And with the 2018 release of SOLIDWORKS PDM and, or SOLIDWORKS in general, uh, that tool is now at its end of life. So if you are currently on Workgroup, you know, what options do you have? So all Workgroup PDM users will need to transition over to the new SOLIDWORKS PDM. And uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM does come in a couple different flavors. We have standard and professional. And for those of you who are on Workgroup PDM, PDM standard is that equivalent version. That's what you'd be looking at. Or if you remember in the past, there was a tool called Enterprise PDM that is now called PDM Professional. So if you are maximizing your, your, uh, the workgroup environment, it might make more sense to look at SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. Now, of course, if you have files inside a workgroup, you'll want to transfer those files into the new PDM. So we can certainly help you with that. Uh, Inflow Technology has access to the tools to help you migrate those files out. And if you have questions about any of this, you can, of course, uh, reach out to, to one of the Inflow folks here at this event. You can reach out to your account manager or visit us online. And Inflow Technology is a team with inside of CATI that's dedicated entirely to PDM solutions. So, and now for something truly new, is a new tool called SOLIDWORKS Manage. And SOLIDWORKS Manage is an add-on product for SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. So what this tool does is it adds uh, a unique set of advanced data management tools. This is done by leveraging the file management capabilities and ease of use with inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM and adding powerful project, process, and item management capabilities. 
So it gives you the ability to assign tasks and measure project timelines using embedded project management tools. You can easily add workflows that allow you to add and track large or complex, proce complex processes like ECRs or ECNs. And you can add those processes to files or tile pro entire projects at will. We can do some of this today with inside PDM, but Manage gives us a much simpler and better way of assigning and kicking out these kinds of processes. So beyond this, Manage also reintroduces items to PDM. This allows you to create engineering bills of material or manufacturing bills of material that downstream systems like ERP can accept directly from the system. Lastly, Manage expands on the current reporting that you get with inside PDM by adding interactive dashboards that can visualize that data that's coming out of PDM. It can also give you reports that you can share with customers or internally with other stakeholders. So you'll now be able to track throughput project statuses uh, through these dashboards. So where PDM really focuses on documents and who can access them, Manage adds a much needed layer of oversight and visibility that has been lacking. So Manage extends what we can do with PDM by adding these PLM capabilities to your engineering processes. And if you need a full PLM solution in the future, you know, you'll already have some of those key processes in place. Or you know, if you just need some of these processes for your, your files with inside of PDM, SOLIDWORKS Manage will add these without the need to go to a full PLM solution. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to Randy and finish up this portion of the presentation. All right, so uh, one popular technique to minimize uh, the cost associated with creating fixtures uh, for, for welded parts or, or uh, sheet metal parts is to design tabs and slots into them. So inside of 2018, when you have a new tab and slot feature, let's take a look at how this guy works here. So uh, we can automate the creation of these self-fixturing uh, features. They can be done in an assembly or on a multi-body part. And in the case of the assembly, it will create the features in the individual part files. So um, you start by choosing an edge to define the tab, a face to define where the slot terminates. Uh, you can apply an offset in here. You can control the tab distance from the end. You can uh, do the spacing equally in, uh, among the, the edge that you cho chose um, or a certain defined length. You can do, uh, as far as the height, can be a blind value or an offset or up to uh, some surface as well. You can do corner treatments like fillets, chamfers. These can all be applied to those tabs uh, and slots as well. And then the clearance between the tab and slot can be specified. And like we said, it creates the features in both uh, components, as you see there, to meet these specifications inside there. We can do this on uh, cylindrical parts as well, as they're showing in this example. And this is going to be really great in the case of weldments. Um, as a multi-body part, they will support this feature as well. Here you can see we've used some tabs here to reduce where you maybe would have to use a fixture to hold these parts in place. Um, and gussets uh, are another great place where you could incorporate tabs and slots in there. So this is going to really help you um, by reducing some manufacturing costs because you're minimizing the need to build fixtures uh, that can be expensive and delay your manufacturing. Uh, had a couple uh, longtime designers of, uh, that have worked in Solid Edge and uh, NX that, uh, that have done a lot of sheet metal design, and they were thrilled to death over this feature because nobody is really doing anything else like this with the tab and slot. So very unique uh, to something SolidWorks can do here in 2018. Also new in sheet metal design is the new normal cut feature. This gives you possibilities in controlling which face cuts from and which angle from and which direction uh, the normal cut goes. New feature uh, in the sheet metal area. So for many companies, the creation of drawings is still an important uh, part of the product development process. We've talked about getting rid of drawings several times through the MBD tools and so on, but we realize that you still, some people still need to make drawings. So we aim to make this process as painless as possible, right, and make making drawings easier for you. So we'll take a look at some of these things in the next few slides here. Uh, 3D model views with the PMI and MBD information, as we've discussed, are a great way to get this manufacturing information across. Well, now when you make a drawing with a model that has the MBD information or the PMI information in there, these views uh, will be accessible just from the view palette. So just like the normal front, top, and right views, any 3D views that are, have been created in there with MBD information can be dragged on the sheet, and you can control which annotations come across. 
So it allows you to still create this 2D drawing as your final deliverable, but leveraging MBD data uh, that you've put in this model for other reasons, like inspection or something like that. Also, when you add new views into the drawings, uh, any, any pre-existing uh, annotations can come across too. Uh, the advanced hole feature that we added in 2017, that's obviously a powerful tool for creating complex multi-stepped holes. As soon as people started using that, they needed a way to customize the callouts for those. So in 2018, we have the ability to customize the callouts for these uh, and show that any way you want, showing the details of each step in that, uh, in that customized hole pattern, that advanced hole. Um, we also give you more flexibility of how drawing information is displayed. If we take a look at this example in the cross-hatching, we can now put uh, cross-hatching uh, on a layer, and we can use that to set cross-hatching visibility, style, and color, uh, like we're showing here. 2018 gives you more freedom, also, when creating complex drawing views, uh, things that we could never do before, like creating broken-out sections of an existing section or of an alternate position view, for example. Uh, here's an example in a section view of this hinge mechanism. After we define the broken out region, we can do something called randomized scale, a new option uh, to increase the clarity. It just mixes up the crosshatch scaling uh, so you can tell which parts are which in that example. And then if we go over to this alternate position view of the hinge, we've got a pre-sketched circle. We can use this now to create a broken out section detailing this arm area, something that we previously couldn't do on top of an alternate position view in the past. So just a couple quick examples in a drawing of how you can do complex broken out views that we could not do before. A lot of times company standards require that uh, all the text in a drawing be all caps, right? And this wasn't so easy to do in the past. So now in 2018 in a table, uh, there's a new option in the table toolbar that allows you to just set it to all caps. One click, everything is to all caps no matter how it was typed inside the table. Another silly easy little thing right that's going to save a lot of time for people so just an all caps option so just some of the powerful productivity tools and drawings there are many others in here uh, but these definitely will help you get your designs documented even faster than before um, let's take a look at e-drawings and enhancements so another way of getting the design outside of SolidWorks to somebody else so previously one of the things that e-drawings could could only do is only show decals if they were on your machine so you had to send somebody all the decals if you wanted them to see them in e-drawings. Now you can embed the, e the decals locally in the e-drawings file so anybody using the free viewer will be able to see those decals. There's a brand new quick access toolbar uh, to let you get to commands like open, save, print, and options and things like that. And then when you do open a file, there's an open progress indicator to let you know how long it's going to take to open this part or assembly uh, that you're opening in e-drawings. You can password protect eDrawings files uh, on creation with an option. And then we mentioned earlier in the MBD section that you can save out eDrawings files with step, four two, step 242 files attached to those. So we, of course, have to have a way to view those in the lower right-hand corner in eDrawings. There'll be an option to see those, access those, delete those, print those, uh, and view those files inside of eDrawings. So a lot of consumers expect to see and, and, and experience your product before you ever get it in their hands. And one way you can do this and help them with this is a tool called Visualize, uh, one of our rendering tools that was introduced a couple of releases ago. And we're going to show some of the new enhancements in Visualize 2018 that are going to help you uh, get a better experience for your customers in this area. So opening your models in SOLIDWORKS Visualize is very easy, just a file open, even though it is a standalone application. The great thing about that is you can put that on anybody's machine, a marketing person's machine, and they can do renderings. Just an open and open up the SOLIDWORKS files. The cool thing is now we can have the predefined cameras, the views, and the lights that all from SOLIDWORKS come across into Visualize. So these three direction lights from SOLIDWORKS are accessible in the Scenes tab. Um, predefined views, populate the cameras tab, and help you reuse those standard views that you've already taken the time to do inside of SOLIDWORKS. We have full control over perspective, depth of field, and so on, uh, but it, it ultimately means less rework for you to have to recreate those inside of Visualize. So after we zoom in and take a close-up of these coffee mugs, let's take a look at the improvements to appearances. So SOLIDWORKS appearances, like glass, metals, plastics, things like that, can now come across into Visualize as well. Before they had their own independent libraries, now we can have share the two libraries between them. 
So we can get access to these through local libraries or uh, the online libraries. So we can go ahead and paint our model with a couple different examples here and, and bring this model to life. Um, we're going to take a look at the lighting areas and a new thing called area lights. So just like traditional directional and spotlights, you can now add a new thing called an area light uh, that is a sphere, a plane, or a disc, or a tube. So simulating fluorescent light tubes if you want to do that. Uh, you can obviously change the brightness of this tube, increase or decrease the brightness. You can even change the color and the tube diameter and size of this. And then it's very easy with a slider bar or just by dragging on the screen to position this tube light in different areas to see how it reflects on your parts. Uh, changing the position of this uh, just by manually dragging on the screen or by using the, the numbers on the, on the property manager. So this helps you get to that, that magazine quality rendering faster than ever before. Here they're going in and adjusting where that light is focusing at and rotating the model around to see how that's going to look. Also in Visualize Professional, which is an upgraded version of the Visualize tool, uh, there's some groundbreaking new technology in here to bring your products to life in virtual reality. So new spherical cameras, these put you right in the center of the action. These are a virtual sphere uh, that you get with just a button press, allowing you to spin around inside that model. Uh, materials and lighting uh, and so on can be adjusted to make that look just right. You can also choose to create stereoscopic images. So the full 3D experience, you can use these through uh, VR, high-end VR devices all the way down to something simple like Google Cardboard uh, to experience these things. And then here's another unique thing, a 360 animation with a fly-through, an exploded view, or in this case, a sun study. So we're in the, inside the cockpit of this airplane, panning around in this 360 view as we see how the sun's going to move and change uh, as we go through that. So those are cool things you can do to, to see your products in this virtual reality environment. So all this new stuff will help you stay ahead of the competition, um, you know, accelerating this design review process uh, without making expensive prototypes. And just as, as a reminder, the way you get Visualize is uh, it's a free download, right? But you got to be on active subscription. So just go to the same place where you download SolidWorks, another tool you can download, and, and like we said, put on somebody else's machine to do renderings or on your machine, of course. So this last section here showed us that all the way from 2D drawings to possibilities with virtual and augmented reality, you know, we offer a lot of enhancements across uh, the, the product line to quickly create these design deliverables and get the product out of the CAD package into people's hands in other ways. So as we wrap up this introduction of SOLIDWORKS 2018, let's take a look at Traca again here. So reminder of their challenge on the screen, uh, what they faced. So happy to say, since they implemented SOLIDWORKS, they cut their time to market in half, and they've doubled their product offering. So tremendous success and, and a great story there from Traca. Once again, there's a case study on the SOLIDWORKS website where you can read the details of this uh, story. So you know, this is a great story of design with Traca, but it's also the perfect example of our theme that we started with at the beginning. Great designs get built. This was a great design. It got built, and people really like this design, right? Of course, that, that all happened with SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS 2018 and these new enhancements. 